one thing that I've been looking into that emerged out of dark market is about the psychology of hackers. And what is it that motivates hackers? What do we know about hackers? It's interesting, I did a little bit of research recently on how much money we spend every year now on cyber security. And around the world, excluding Russia and China, who also have their own very big spend, but they don't publish it, um, around the, the world, we spend $120 billion a year on cyber security, of which about 40% is, sorry, of, of which about 60% is government spend on cyber security, and of that 60% government spend, about 40% is accounted for by the United States uh, of America. So these are huge sums of money which are scheduled to, scheduled to double uh, in a, the next five years or so. And what do we actually spend that money on? Well, we spend that money on what are called high-end digital solutions, which means you get companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and you pay them large sums of money, and they come in with these incredible sort of whiz-bang systems to prevent you from coming under attack from hackers, which uh, will work up to a point, but... Uh, there are few, if any, systems around the world which are 100% secure. But interestingly, what we don't do is, is we don't spend any money on researching who the people doing the attacking actually are, where they come from, what their socialization process is, what their motivation is. And this is important because so far I've been talking to you about cybercrime. But in order to understand what's going on in the, on, on the net, you have to think of three pillars, what I call the three pillars of malfeasance on the internet. There is cybercrime, which is your credit card being nicked. There is cyber industrial espionage, which is companies seeking to break into other companies' computer systems in order to use that data in the, 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 the data in the computer systems to gain a competitive advantage, and that accounts for about 34%, according to Verizon's latest threat assessment, 34% of bad stuff on the net is company-to-company -company things, which nobody ever reports, because nobody likes to admit that they have been the victim of a successful uh, hack attack. They admit it to Verizon every year, but anonymously, and that's where Verizon get their, get their data from. And then the third thing, is the big one, is cyber warfare, state-to-state -state warfare or non-state actor to state to state warfare. And hackers migrate between the three pillars. So you may be a hacker working for an insurgent or terrorist organization that is using dark market as a revenue raising uh, operation. You may be somebody who's working on uh, cyber warfare techniques who's using dark market to see what viruses are coming out in the criminal world, because like something like Stuxnet, some of Stuxnet was cobbled together from existing viruses that were common in the criminal world. And so everything is becoming this sort of cacophony uh, uh, in cyberspace, in the security sector, which is made all the more difficult by the fact that you never know who you're dealing with. And this is why I am beginning to argue now publicly and in, uh, in law enforcement and, and national security um, <coughs> arenas for some of the $120 billion a year that we spend on whiz-bang solutions to internet security to be channeled into researching who hackers are and what they're doing. At the moment, we have a very simple rule in the Western world, and that is... If anyone exceeds their authorized access, and that's the phrase used in the Computer uh, Fraud and Abuse Act here in the United States, then they are criminal. And it doesn't matter what they're doing. If you're, on, if you're a member of dark market trying to hack into uh, uh, a uh, computer server in order to secure financial gain, you're the same as uh, a, a youthful idealist who works for Anonymous hacking into Stratfor for example. But it's interesting, when we look at something like Anonymous, which is a very, very curious phenomenon, they're a new political movement 
with an ideology, in my opinion, fairly, fairly half-baked, semi-anarchic ideology. This extraordinary ideology, which doesn't just attack Stratfor and PayPal in defense of WikiLeaks and things like that. Other targets of Anonymous have been the Mexican drug cartels, Boko Haram, the Islamist insurgency in, uh, in Nigeria, um, <coughs> and uh, uh, Greek oligarchs who are trying to make a quick buck out of the crisis uh, in Greece. So they're tapping into a real idealism of youth, yet according to us, in terms of law enforcement, they are all criminal hackers who should be in jail. And I think we need to think a little more carefully and research into what is happening to young people that is leading them to resort to this type of, uh, to this type of uh, activity.